if democracy suddenly disappeared in Europe, mm. right? You'd be shocked and you'd be like, oh my God, that's a massive blow to democracy. Well, how would you react if something, a, a structure three and a half times Europe suddenly went non-democratic? And, and people don't quite understand the scale uh, of India and its democracy. So how would you react if democracy suddenly disappeared in Europe? Mm. Right? You'd be shocked and you'd be like, oh my god, that's a massive blow to democracy. Well, how would you react if something, a, a structure three and a half times Europe suddenly went non-democratic, right? That's happened already. That's not something that is going to happen in the future. That's already happened. But there's no reaction. And you know, if we're talking about, if we're talking about Europe, that's the thing that shocks me. Uh, there's no reaction, right? And of course, there are reasons for there not being a reaction. There is, there is sort of trade and there's money and stuff like that. But Indian democracy is a public good. Mm. And if you're looking at the democratic, you know, the democratic structure, it is the single most important public good. It's the largest, it's, it's three or four times the size of the United States in terms of numbers. Uh, same with regards to Europe. So, so the surprising thing is that the, the so-called defenders of democracy, which are the United States, uh, European countries, seem to just be oblivious that a huge chunk of the democratic model has come undone, right? which is a real problem with regards to, uh, and, and frankly, we are, the opposition is fighting that battle. right? And it's not just an Indian battle. It's actually a much more important battle because it's a battle for uh, a huge part of the democratic people on this planet. Um, as I said, we have placed, the opposition has placed a vision on the table. And that vision is an inclusive vision. Um, it's a vision of bringing people together. And we're in conversation with the opposition. The opposition is talking to uh, each other. And I'm confident that we will get uh, something very interesting going forward. I'm not, uh, I'm very uh, optimistic. My name is Suresh yeah, Gupta, absolutely. New World Newspaper. I'm settled in London since 1961. And I knew your grandmother, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, through Bal Sahyog in India. Okay. Because I was working from 58 to 61 for All India Radio. And then your great-grandfather, Pandit Nehru, through Bharat Yog Samaj. You, you met I, him? Yes, I met him. I used to go to Trimurti house to get their signatures, etc. Okay. Because I had a bicycle. And they were just near all India Radio, all these organizations. So what, what was your what was your experience in meeting him? What did you what did you think? Pandit Nehru was a great man. I always touched his feet and he always blessed me. Miss, Mrs. Gandhi, your grandmother, was like an elder sister to me. She helped me a great deal and she was a wonderful woman. When she came here in a press conference uh, in London, after being imprisoned by Murarji Desai, 
a journalist asked her, what is your experience of prison in India? And she said, I don't want to talk anything bad about India in this conference. Now you are being constantly attacked in the Indian media for your Cambridge lecture. I hope that you will take some lesson from what Mrs. Indira Gandhi said, because I am your well-wisher, and I like to see you become Prime Minister well, of what's India. What's your question? Day. There is so, no question. So